Hey folks, it's Shane from Performance EV. Today we're going to start stripping down the front of our electric Porsche 911. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. So for those of you new to this channel, this is my little spot on YouTube where I put electric motors into fun and interesting cars. And today we're working on our Porsche 911. So it's our 1998 Porsche 996 Carrera, which we've been doing a lot of work on the back of the car, uh, getting the space for the motor and the battery sorted. And today I wanted to move the focus up the front because there's one last thing that ties this car to its internal combustion engine fuel powered past, and that's the petrol tank. Um, so I want to, I've got a bunch of things I need to do up the front of the car. Um, and I want to start doing that with dropping the subframe and getting that petrol tank out of the way. Because once that's out of there, then there's nothing more that kind of in the car that's either fuel or oil or anything like that. Um, and yeah, then I think that's a pretty good milestone to have reached. So we're going to tackle that today. Let's get to it. So the subframe's part of what holds the kind of the, connects the wheels to the car and it runs underneath um, basically few, you know, bringing together key body points and the key suspension components. So there's two ways you can kind of go about dropping this. One is to drop it as a complete unit. So suspension components still attached to the subframe and basically undoing uh, things like the brake calipers, taking them off, undoing the shock towers, and then just letting everything drop. Or you can disconnect the suspension components from the subframe and just drop the subframe out on its own. That's the way I'm going to do it. Uh, part of the reason for that is that actually I need to remove some of these suspension components anyway. Um, I did a complete suspension refresh on the left side of the car. Still need to do it on the right, so I'm going to be taking them off no matter what. So I'm going to do that now, and then we'll be in more of a position to actually just drop the subframe as a single unit um, rather than with all the kind of wheels and everything attached. All right, so here we are underneath the car. Uh, it's looking a fair bit better. Still not amazing. There's still a bit of stuff on things, but I've managed to pressure wash most of it off. Uh, for the most part, not looking too bad. There's a couple of little areas where I need to sand it back, treat some rust, and then just, um, yeah, probably put like an epoxy coating or something, and then some rubberized undercoating over it. And then we should be good to go. So, where is the focus for today? I think that's a Lamborghini. Uh, so where's the focus for today? So, uh, this is the subframe with all the various components attached to it. So you see you've got a suspension arm, suspension arm, sway bar, and then connects to the body there, and then connects to the body via that as well. And then we've also got our bolt for the uh, steering rack and then we've got some nice leaves here free stuff that came with the car um, but yeah I think dropping this will then allow me to make sure everything's clear up there and then you can see up into the the area around the fuel tank um, but we'll be dropping that later so what are we going to do so first job I'm probably going to get these um, support bars out so 16 mil bolts either side and we'll just whiz those out and then what we can do is the two four 18 mil bolts in each corner plus these little guys uh, bring it down with the sway bar attached um, and that will yeah free things up um, and then the fuel tank is the other side of this pan here so let's put you in a good place you can watch and we'll get on with it. So forgot to hit film for that bit, but uh, yeah, got the two cross members out, undid these 16 mil bolts, just changing over to a 15 for the uh, steering rack, and then we'll get onto the four big 18 mil
a bit of a plus. It sounds like our petrol tank. It's pretty empty. All right, now we've got the subframe out of the way. Um, we're nearly at the point where we can drop the fuel tank. It's still held in at a couple of points. I'm just going to go up to the top of the car and show you what needs to happen around the fuel filler neck. And then we'll come back down here and undo the rest of the bolts. Okay, so now that we've got everything, um, or the main things disconnected down below, and we'll go back down there later, we've got a few other things that we need to get sorted. Um, so we have to go back outside the car, um, basically under the front wheel arch, and we need to remove the wheel arch liner, which I've done. And then you can see this, this is the fuel filler neck, um, which obviously does what it says. It takes the, the fuel and from fills the tank. Uh, so we're going to start taking that apart. And what we mainly want to get out is this kind of metal piece here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo this. Oh, that's what 20 plus year old plastic does. Um, I'm going to undo this plastic panel so I can actually see what I'm working at with from outside the car. A little bit of brute force now once we can uh, free up this uh, rubber and plastic piece, which basically is just designed to filter any fuel that gets in here or water, I guess. Uh, down and out of the car. So I want to reuse some, at least some of this uh, when I put a an electric socket here um, to to stop it from yeah from getting soaked. So yeah, uh, this seems to be easier to do two-handed. So I'll come back to you. Now I've got easy access in around here as uh, a couple of electrical connectors, various things related to the fuel tank that need to be disconnected. Um, and that then, should then free this up to, to be on its merry way. So there's only a couple of things to undo here. One is the, um, so one appears to be a ground and then we've got a couple of breather pipes which go into this sort of expan expansion thing. Um, there's also a, 10 mil nut that goes there, which connects onto the neck there. So in the other side of the straps that go underneath the fuel tank, there is a 13 mil bolt each side that needs to be undone. So the final physical connection for the fuel tank is actually up in under here. I don't know if you can see it. There we go. No. There we go. This bolt here, which holds a strap that runs across the, the back of the tank. All right, so we've got our strap removed on one side. I've just kind of pushed it out of the way. I've also disconnected the steering rack from the steering column uh, just to give myself a little bit more space to play with. So I hadn't fully removed the um, old uh, power steering lines and they're causing me a bit of a headache so I'm going to get rid of them now because they're stopping this from dropping down fully. So I'll get them out of the way and then we'll be good to go. So now that the tank's nice and loose, basically we can pull the filler neck out. Uh, it's really just a question of kind of twisting it and tugging at it until you can get it underneath the lip of the um, of the wheel arch and then just basically pulling it out. And eventually uh, you'll manage to get it all the way out. And there we go. We won't be using that again. 
So in order to be able to get the tank down, uh, we need to get the coolant pipes out of the way. Basically, they just kind of, they're a little bit too close to it and they're obviously installed after it is when the car, car is being put together. So I'm gonna head down the back of the car, um, unbolt the far ends of these and get them down. I, I want to take them out anyway. So uh, yeah, we'll just do that now. All right, so I've taken the rest of the heater pipes out. So that's them cleared all the way to the back of the car. I'll be putting my own sort of stuff in there for cooling the, the EV components. And that'll be an extra video series or whatever. But I've been lying down here underneath, just making sure the last, that everything's clear. And uh, I found the last two clips that hold this in place, which I'll just show you where they are now. And then we'll uh, drop, the, drop the fuel tank. So this is our fuel tank here, um, front, back uh, so it's basically kind of flat at the front and then it's got different sections where things are coming out and then this kind of nose that comes out of it towards the back which starts to go into the tunnel um, and then runs out of space because the the heater pipes come in in the Carrera 4 it's different because you've got the um, prop shaft coming up towards the front so this is actually like a, a saddle over that but a uh, bit more fuel in the normal Carrera 2. So anyway, at the back of the, the fuel tank, you've got the points where the, um, where the straps connected to previously. So they went from there up to the um, subframe, but there's actually, and I'll get you in closer now. Sorry, that's actually where the uh, straps fitted into that was um, some retaining bolts for the um, heater pipes. So, um, yeah, right here is where the uh, bolt went in and actually it's a lipped contact because there's another bit of a strap that's kind of part of the fuel tank itself that just clips over this piece of metal. So you kind of have to push it up. Let me see if I can show you it better. So you can see it there. Um, that tab is basically what the fuel tank's hanging on now. So I need to just push it up slightly into its position, let it off on each side, and then it should just come down. So here's the tank on its way down. Um, obviously, if you were uh, keeping all the components here, you would just want to uh, disconnect both of those um, fuel hoses from the top when you, before you let it drop. But obviously, I don't really care about them. Um, I've, <laughs> I've already chopped them to pieces from elsewhere in the car. So I'm just going to unhook them and just let them slowly lower the car down or lower the tank down from the top. So there we have it. Fuel tank out of the way. Plenty of room for activities. Uh, it's actually a decent sized space and while the fuel tank has all sorts of kind of shapes to it, uh, many of those are to get around other components that I don't actually need. So whatever I want to put in here, uh, I've actually got lots of room to do it. So these are the heater pipes that go into the uh, heat exchanger in the dash. I'm not sure I'm going to retain those. I'll probably just get rid of them and look at some sort of uh, electric heating in that because I don't think the temperature is coming from the um, the motor and inverter are actually going to be enough to really heat that. Uh, so we'll get rid of these pipes and we'll get rid of them all the way along. 
Then these ones here are all just kind of fuel system pipes, so we'll be getting rid of those. Um, I've already cut them off over there, so we'll get rid of all of that. Um, um, got our steering column, that's staying where it is. Nothing's happening with that, can't move it. Um, but yeah, the rest is a decent shaped space. So here's what we're planning to put on in the front of the car. Getting the, uh, the big T in there, finally getting some Tesla components in to go with uh, the Leaf components and various other automotive manufacturers. Uh, this is going to go in the front where the fuel tank was. It is a Tesla third generation battery charger, three phase, up to, I believe, 22 kilowatts. Um, and we're going to get that working on open source software, firmware and controllable. And then we'll get the uh, components needed in there to, um, to actually get power through it. And as a sneak peek of how this might look, Yeah, I know this is a Type 1 charge port and won't be able to use all the power that the Tesla charger can actually provide, but it's it was came with the leaf stack that I bought, so I'm going to get it installed, use it to start with, and get a Type 2 charger uh, at some point in the future. All right, so the car has been officially de-iced. Uh, no fuel tank, no engine. So yeah, it's a good good place to be. Uh, obviously we've got our motor in, um, this gives us space to put in a bunch of the other components and also is going to allow me to just button up a few things that are still kind of hanging over me, especially around things like the uh, coolant system and that sort of stuff. But that's all for, for another day, I won't go into too much detail uh, on that. But yeah, with the fuel tank out of the way we can figure out how to get this charger uh, fitted in place both just physically so whatever amounts and stuff need to be made to hold it there but then also um, from I guess an electronic perspective so there's going to be some work inside this to actually make sure I can get control of it and then also to get the wiring out of it to the port to the charging port and then on to the battery um, or where the battery is going to go anyway so yeah so that's all ahead of us a uh, fair bit to do um, but I'm really looking forward to it. Um, getting the fuel tank out was the mucky, dirty job. These jobs are the, the fun ones. So if this is the sort of project that you like to watch on YouTube and you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. And yeah, drop me a comment if you've got any uh, anything you want to say. I do try and read them and respond to them as quickly as I can. But I'm really happy about where we are. Uh, looking forward to the next steps, and I hope you'll join me on them. Uh, Till next time, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you soon.